Hi, I'm Bob Gimlin. A while back, I viewed a video about an event called the Bigfoot Massacre of LaFleur County. In the video, a discomforting robot voice told me that Native Americans, known as the Choctaw Tribe, from the area then known as the Oklahoma Territories, had nocturnal visitors referred to in the narrative as giants. The giants, with increasing frequency, would steal the Choctaw staple crops and other food reserves. But according to the legend, they were becoming more bold. By 1855, the giants began to take children, presumably to eat. The natives, in their terror and desperation, turned to a local U.S. Army cavalry captain named Joshua LaFleur, who was half Choctaw himself. LaFleur led 30 Choctaw tribe members and seven U.S. cavalry soldiers, all on horseback to where the giants were known to dwell. As they were riding through a clearing, they came to a wood line where they saw four of the hairy giants, waiting for them. The forest was allegedly littered with the skeletal remains of the children that had been taken. At a distance of 200 yards, LaFleur and his 37 horsemen opened fire with their 50 caliber, sharp rifles. The giants waited, undeterred by the onslaught of 50 caliber rounds. LaFleur's mount, at the head of the charge, was instantly slain by a fatal blow to the head. Falling to the ground, LaFleur emptied his revolver point blank into one of the creatures, and in return, the giant pulled off his head. As quickly as the assault began, it ended, leaving all four Bigfoot slain, a number of the cavalry slain, alongside their captain. The remaining Choctaw buried their fallen comrades and captain, as well as what remained of the children, and according to the story, they burned the corpses of the giants. So I can verify that a place called LaFleur County exists in what is now Oklahoma, and that the Choctaw called it home. I can also verify that Oklahoma, especially in 1855, was more than suitable Bigfoot habitat. So the setting for this narrative is sound. But what about the conflict? Well, unfortunately, I can verify that in the past 25 years, a minimum of four children have been abducted by primates. At least three human children were abducted and killed in the 90s by a chimpanzee aptly named Saddam. And then in 2003, a chakra baboon abducted and killed an infant in South Africa. None of these children survived these well-documented abductions. Every legend has a kernel of truth. And though the setting and conflict of this narrative seem viable, the story's climax and credibility is where I take issue. Captain LaFleur's hunting party allegedly consisted of a total of 38 men, all on horseback, with 50 caliber rifles. And I don't care if we're talking about grizzly bear, bison, gorilla, or fighting a rakai. When outnumbered ten to one by men on horses, animals will flee, and they will flee fast. Not to mention the hail of semi-automatic 50 caliber rounds. The Sharps rifle is specifically designed to take down buffalo, made in an attempt to cripple the hunter-gatherer Native Americans out west, so this weapon was no joke. Sasquatch would no longer be a mystery if it was in their nature to fight such a force. In fact, some of the best evidence we have of Bigfoot is exactly of the creature fleeing two horsemen, much less attacking an army of them. Also, I can see that Bigfoot are extremely hard to kill. However, 38 50 caliber weapons firing at open targets would have made very short work of said targets. Credibility is very important in stories like this one. Bold claims require bold support. Unfortunately, this story has very little. A fictional movie called Bone Tomahawk came out in 2015. In Bone Tomahawk, actors Kurt Russell and Matthew Fox play 1850s United Army officers who, with the assistance of Native Americans, set out to slay cannibalistic, child-stealing giants in North America. Then in 2016, the creepy robot voice narrated this video. I reviewed hundreds of online databases of anthropological and historical journals, and there's not one mention of this incident, folkloric or otherwise. So this narrative is essentially made up. And it was clumsily made up. It wasn't even a massacre. A massacre is when one group of combatants unnecessarily and indiscriminately kills a large number of human beings or animals. Usually the aggressor suffers no loss. Otherwise it would be a battle. And in this narrative, there were heavy losses on both sides. And it was in revenge of 19 child deaths. So it certainly wasn't indiscriminate or unnecessary. 
The LaFleur County Bigfoot Massacre is an improbable narrative based off a 2015 fictional movie narrated by a creepy robot voice who incorrectly titled his video. The video, by the way, begins with the words, True Bigfoot Encounter. And I get it. You kind of have to click on it. I certainly did numerous times. But I take the subject of Bigfoot very seriously. Perhaps even to a fault. And this kind of stuff really isn't helping the cause. Because I have more or less dedicated my life to this subject. So I guess it's just disheartening when this 2015 folktale narrated by a weird robot voice has more views than my whole channel combined. My channel being a summarization of years of academic and field research. But I do want to be completely clear about one thing. Modern Homo sapiens, like you and I, walked the same regions at the same time as dozens of other human-like species. We even made it with some of them. Even in modern times, we still can't even deal with race relations. So there is not a single doubt in my mind that we have engaged in armed conflicts with upright non-human primates. Just not in LaFleur County. And not in 1855. And not documented by some creepy robot voice. For some reason, massacres seem to be a common motif in the Bigfoot knowledge sphere, be it at LaFleur County or Bluff Creek. These creatures clearly have the tactic and skill to avoid being massacred, or else they would be long gone, like so very many other non-human primates. Do you think we fought wars with Bigfoot? Maybe these hominid creatures had denser populations at one point, and fought with First Nation people for resources. If this ever did occur, it would have been quite a tremendous and awful spectacle. I personally prefer to lean toward the nomadic, flight-before-fight creature, but of course you never know. Either way, if you've seen the video I'm referring to, and you think it's getting old, then like this video, and together, let's give this subject the respect it deserves.